I started this book when I was still in Australia and I was working in a school of nursing um, and my PhD was on the history of psychiatry and this creation of juvenile delinquency, right? And I got a job with the Dean of Nursing at my old school and he was really interested in history and um, we had a great relationship. And then I met our mental health nurses and I talked to them about what were some of the ideas that had informed their education and their practice. And they talked to me about an American nurse called Hildegard Peplau. And everyone knew her name. All of my Australian colleagues knew her name, which was unusual to have an American nurse feature so prominently in Australian education, which usually follows British patterns. So I was kind of curious about her and I discovered that her archives were at two places in the United States. Part of them are at uh, the University of Pennsylvania and a large amount of boxes are up at Radcliffe at Harvard. Um, and I got a grant from the University of Pennsylvania and from Harvard to go look at those archives. So, and I discovered a much bigger story than I imagined. Um, and so I had started putting that together when I got the job at Emory. So once I moved to the United States, it just became easier and it made more sense to just focus on American nurses. Uh, and by then I'd met some of, you know, the psych mental health nurses at Emory and I realized that they had a really interesting history that no one really knew anything about. Um, nursing history itself is a pretty thriving discipline. There are lots of really great books written about the history of American nursing, but no one had written anything about um, the development of psychiatric nursing. So that is what spurred me to really solidify and to focus on the development of American psychiatric nursing. And I started off thinking, oh, I'll just look at it after World War II, because that's when it really becomes a highly professionalized um, discipline. It's actually the first discipline in nursing to develop a clinical master's degree. So you could do maybe a, a doctor of education or you could do public health masters, but psych nursing was the first clinical master's degree. And I was really interested in how that had come about and how psych nurses had become really powerful in the post-war period. So it started with that idea. And then of course I realized that you can't start writing about something in 1948, like it has connections back before then. So when people pick up the book, it starts with the development of American nursing generally in the late 1800s. And the formal kind of professionalization too of psychiatry. So psychiatrists are really interested in the late 1800s to run hospitals that are seen as places where people can go and be cured, can recover, instead of being just warehoused. So the late 1800s, there's a lot of reform movements in American medicine and nursing. So it starts there. Um, and it goes up until about 1963, when a few things happen in the history of mental health that really change the way psych nursing develops um, because we move to a community-based type of approach to mental health care. So a lot of those big hospitals start closing down. So that's kind of the time period that it covers. And so people will read about the very early um, development of the profession in the big old fashioned state hospitals. Um, and then they'll see the impact of two world wars on thinking about new methods for psychiatric treatment. And they'll learn about how important nurses were to that process. In the history of psychiatry, generally nurses get overlooked, but it was nurses who were doing the day-to-day -day care and really looking after people. Um, and so then they'll learn about how nurses fought to have psychiatric and mental health nursing um, attached to universities and to be a university-based education, not just a training school. And at that point, after World War II, you really see how powerful psychiatric nurses become and they really do shape the whole discipline. So it's not just about psych nursing, it's really about some of the debates 
that nursing itself was having about what does it mean to be a nurse? I think initially nurses were not sure about whether working in psychiatry was something that they really wanted to do. You know, back in before World War II, if you wanted to be a psychiatric nurse, you had to go and live on site. So a lot of young women, which is nursing was traditionally, you know, aimed at young women, were hesitant to go and live on a big, you know, psychiatric hospital that was removed from a city usually, you know, um, and they had a bad reputation. They were not really considered safe places and the nature of the work was quite, um, it, you know, it's difficult looking after psychiatric patients before there's medication was very difficult and not really fun work. Um, so it, it wasn't ever a very popular profession um, among young women until those institutions start to really um, do a lot better and be much more um, places of care and therapy rather than custodial. And I think, you know, nurses had a really big part to play in that. There were some really important nurses after World War II who were really interested in reforming the hospitals that they worked in and had a lot of really strong ideas about how to give good therapeutic care. And they were central to a lot of the, those reforms that we've seen now. <laughs> Nurse Ratched, I mean, what a incredible figure in not just popular culture, but the history of psychiatry, knowing that, again, we see a new te television show called Ratchet that's supposed to be about this character from a previous book and movie. Um, there, there is a long history of cultural representations of nurses and psychiatric hospitals. It goes back to the 1940s, really. There was a, a terrific movie and a book called The Snake Pit that came out in 1948. And it was written by a woman who had been committed to Bellevue Hospital in New York City by her husband. And that woman was played in the movie by Olivia de Havilland. So it was a very popular movie and it didn't really do any favors to anyone. Um, you know, it was called A Snake Pit for a reason. And a lot of the nurses that I read about, they knew, they watched that movie, they saw it, they saw themselves portrayed on the screen and they were upset by it, but they recognized it as well. And a lot of them said, they even wrote about it and they said, so the public now thinks that this is us, that this is what we do and it's not acceptable. And they were determined to eradicate anything in their own practice that they saw reflected in popular culture. But I don't think that they were um, successful, not necessarily through any, um, any problem of their own. Basically, they're working in a system in psychiatric hospitals that are continually underfunded and, and continue to be underfunded. So it's really difficult to improve services where there is no financial commitment from state or federal governments. Um, so whatever reform nurses were able to do was really only ever possible when there was an injection of federal funding in particular after World War II. Um, and then they tried very hard again in the 1960s with the move to community mental health. And so movies like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, they do two things, I think, which is one really push reform. So I'm grateful for movies like that because they do expose the reality of what it was like in those institutions and they were not good places and I, I don't think anyone would ever say that they were and nurses themselves didn't think that they were great places but they also do a disservice because they portray psychiatry as incredibly scary and they portray mental illness as this thing that you should be terrified of. And so we see it again now with the new show on Netflix, Ratched. This, and also, you know, he's made a previous show called American Horror Stories Asylum. So this continual kind of idea that psychiatric hospitals are some kind of horror story. Um, and they were not great places, but what they've done is what that kind of representation does is scare people, frighten people. And there's a, a, I think Ratched, Nurse Ratched in 1960s and then again today 
continues to reinforce this stereotype about the type of person that is a psychiatric nurse. But also I think what they're trying to do is think about this idea of psychiatry as a form of power or control over people. And so in a way, the nurse becomes a symbol for this larger kind of network of power over people um, and especially over vulnerable people. So it's a very complicated relationship between the reality and the popular culture representations. And they are not, they're not disconnected that, you know, those stereotypes are based in some kind of reality. The way psych mental health nursing is taught today is in some ways exactly how the nurse reformers in the 1950s hoped it would be, that it would be a standard rotation that every nurse would do. At the same time, I think they would be disappointed that it's not enough, right? And so they really believed, a lot of the nurses that I write about in my book believe that all nursing was mental health nursing, that the essence of being a nurse was your ability to connect with a patient and that the greatest tool the nurse had was what they would call the therapeutic use of self. And so those concepts are now central to nursing, to the way we teach nurses what it means to be a nurse, not just in psych mental health nursing, but across the whole spectrum. I try and teach them ab about that past so that they know that their profession has a, has a history of advocating for itself and defining itself and also advocating for patients, uh, which nurses in the past thought was incredibly important. But I also think that they would be disappointed to some extent to the way that the medical model has become the norm of psychiatric treatment and care. And again, that's not necessarily something that nurses themselves have a great deal of control over, but it is a space that nurses can intervene in. So it always gives me um, hope when I do interact with people who are teaching psych mental health nursing today and how much more complex it is than how it was in the past. You know, they're really trying to deal with multiple types of diagnostic um, techniques and treatment modalities and really complex drugs um, and all of those things that nurses were really only just discovering, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And those are now kind of standard practice. So it's a much more complicated profession, I think, than it used to be. But I think a lot of what was really unique about it has, um, has become subsumed in a biomedical approach to mental health more generally, which is, you know, give someone a drug and they'll be okay. And again, that's because of a lack of funding for mental health services, generally speaking. It's cheaper to give someone a pill.